Halil Karaveli, who is a senior fellow with the Turkey Initiative at the Central Asia Caucasus Institute and Silk Road Studies Program Joint Center. Who would be interested in bringing Turkey into into the conflict with Syria? The rebels, of course, because they they will not succeed as it looks in, in overthrowing Assad without foreign intervention. So mm-hmm. they are interested in, in. It's a messy story, you know. But I think that first of all, the rebels would be interested in bringing in Turkey, and Turkey is interested in bringing in the United States. So the, the rebels are not going to win with on their own. Turkey is not going to win on its own. So you know, the, the rebels need Turkey, and Turkey needs America. And America is not willing to go to war no, in Syria. No, not yet. Not yet. Now, all, even though if that guy Romney is elected president, in his recent statement, he has you know said that he's going to arm the Syrian opposition. And uh, of course, it might be that there have been some speculation in Turkey that uh, that uh, not perhaps the Syrian regime, but the Iranians want to bring in Turkey in a way just to defeat them. But I don't think that actually that uh, the Iranians would be interested in, in, in bringing in Turkey to Syria right now because it seems, that what, what I understand, that Assad is co- kind of consolidating his, his position and um, with the support of the Iranians and perhaps some support of Russians and in a way, and the population is not rising against them anymore. You know, you don't see a big Sunni uprising there. And uh, the Sunni middle class uh, have not turned against Assad yet. Mm-hmm. So... And I think that one reason for that, or the main reason for that, is that the Syrian opposition, the so-called opposition, is almost, almost entirely now Al Qaeda and Salafis, and, and they are indulging. You know, they they are. This is a pure terrorism, and, uh, and many in the Syrian uh, Sunni Muslim middle class, who perhaps are not so enthusiastic about Assad, are not enthusiastic about te- the terrorists and, and about Islamic fundamentalists coming to power. So this is something that has been, you know, so far not been noticed internationally, that the, the scene in Syria doesn't look exactly as we did, uh, have, you know, a couple of months ago. And since, uh, you know, this Islamist, Al-Qaeda and Salafist element has gone so, grown so strong within the rebels, rebels, among the rebels, that has actually made it easier for Assad to face them off. And it appears that, you know, the, the forecast that said that he was going to fall, it has, you know, they, 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 it, he hasn't fallen. And he doesn't seem, you know, on the brink of falling either. <laughs> the extremists are now prevailing in the opposition. Definitely, because they are the ones who, who know how to fight. And they, have the, they have the fighting experience from Afghanistan and other places. So they have been pouring in to, to Syria from Afghanistan, Yemen, and other parts of the or, or, and Caucasus, mm-hmm. etc. You know, so you have all this has become a gathering for for the jihadists. So of course, yeah, that, that's a, there, it's a big price for them to, to win there if they would be able to, to establish a, a base, a new Al Qaeda mm-hmm. uh, within the Arab Sunni Muslim uh, Middle East. That would be a huge victory, uh, their biggest victory so far for Al Qaeda. Of course. Well, definitely, uh, that needs to be prevented somehow. So that needs to be prevented, and that is also that one reason, the main reason why the United States is not supporting Turkey, it is not you know willing to go along and establishing those like, no-fly zones. But it has already been established, de facto. Not a no-fly zone, but uh, yeah, they, what the Turks have done is that they have said that you know we will engage Syrian troops who come close to our border. Of course, they have. The Syrians have still, you know, come pretty close to that border, and uh, and but you, there, you know, there is no shooting down of Syrian helicopters and stuff like that. So, but uh, so they, no, fly, no, there is no fly zone. I think that the main question that we should, you know, uh, address today is, uh, you know, what is Turkey aiming to do? You know, is is this, you know, what well, is Turkey going to go to go to war? That that's <laughs> that is the main question, isn't it? But why would it want to go to war? As far as I understand, after the mm-hmm. parliament had voted on the resolution, there were street protests. But if you remember Sunday, Mr. Erdogan was mm-hmm. saying that Turkey is very close to war with Syria. And if the need arises, like he put it, even old yeah. people would take up arms. What is he preparing us for? This is a big mystery, actually. And a lot of Turkish commentators are trying to you know, make sense of what is happening. And if I would like to say, to sum it up now, what is Turkey? Want? First of all, Turkey wants to get rid of Assad, and they want to precipitate a regime change in Syria. And the fact that they have, you know, had Parliament authorize armed military operations abroad, not only in Syria, abroad, the, the text does not refer specifically to Syria, only to foreign countries, which, you know, in plural, and uh, means that they, that is a way of demonstrating a political will to do something, and it's also meant to be a deterrent against Assad. 
uh, because Assad and Syria and Iran are arming the Kurdish and, and helping the Kurdish insurgents in Turkey. Which means that what has happened is that Turkey jumped on board this thing uh, more than a year ago, thinking that Assad was going to fall quickly and, and started to help the, the insurgents in Syria arm them in the hope that they would soon be able to topple Assad, which has not happened. Instead, Assad and its main Iranian ally have now been, you know, fighting back Turkey with, by, by supporting the Kurdish insurgents. So this has put Turkey in an extremely dangerous situation. Uh, they have committed themselves to, to bringing down Assad, but they are not able to do it. They have not been able to do it so far. Instead, Assad is retaliating. So in that case, Erdogan has to, you know, make clear that, you know, he is, you know, a force to reckon with still. And Turkey is, my information is that the Turkish government has ordered the general staff for a couple of months ago to prepare for a big war. So war preparations are being, you know, they are on the way and the Turkish army is moving more and more massive troops on the border. Does this mean that Turkey is going to go in there by itself? No, this is not something that they want to do. Definitely not. Because they know okay, they, they might be able to defeat the Syrian army, but, you know, left with taking charge of post-Assad Syria alone would be a disaster for Turkey. And it is also by no means certain that they will be able to, you know, they, they can get stuck in the Syrian desert, the Turkish army. So, and with all, surrounded by, by, by all kinds of dangers. You know what happened to the United States in Iraq, you know, and it, it was not a success for the U.S. So, you know, for a much smaller power like Turkey to succeed and prevail in Syria, you know, that is not going to happen. So what Turkey needs, Turkey needs to, from its own strategic point of view, to remove Assad and because it has become a threat to its own security by its help to the Kurdish insurgency. And Turkey is preparing to do that. But it cannot do it alone. It has to be together with the U.S. and the Western allies. So that, and, and so far, Turkey has been unable to persuade the U.S. to act. Erdogan even complained a couple of weeks ago when he was interviewed at CNN that Obama was not forthcoming. And, of course, so Turkey is in a very, very difficult position. Also, the Iranians have vowed that they are going to, to, to fight back if Turkey acts against, against Syria. And what that might be, you know, we, we might end up with a big regional war between Turkey and Iran eventually. So, so there are lots of huge risks here. And, uh, of course, situations like this, they can, you know, things can get out of hand by themselves. They have their own dynamics. So where the actors eventually may end up, you know, they cannot always foresee that. But, you know, one thing is that Turkey does want to get rid of Assad and is prepared to, to you know, move militarily against him. But number two is uh, Turkey is not able to do that alone. It has to have U.S. and Western help. And as, as things stand today, Turkey is caught in a dilemma because it has, you know, started something in Syria, which it is unable to finish. So it has to go, you know, that's Turkey's dilemma. And it's very interesting. Just today, I've read in a, in a pro-government Turkish newspaper, a one, an article by one of the, you know, leading Turkish strategists to whom the government listens. And he said that this is, we cannot do it alone. And we might even consider the unthinkable to talk to Bashar Assad. That, I find it very interesting. So on, on the one hand, you hear Erdogan, you know, talking very, very, you know, using a, deploying a rhetoric that conjures the division of, you know, a very, you know that, as if Turkey is going to go to war in, in a second. But what you really hear from inside government circles is a deep concern about this situation. Because Turkey is under threat and it cannot finish what it has started. So what we are seeing today is actually a total fiasco of Turkish foreign policy. It is very interesting, the option which you have mentioned, is entering into talks with Assad. You said that it is something unthinkable, but I believe that would be a very wise move to do. It would be a very sure, mature to do that. Yeah, of course, this was something that should have been done much earlier. The whole Syrian crisis should have been managed in a way that you, know, you should have engaged the regime and you should have engaged, of course, the opposition and other parts of the Syrian society, bringing them together and, you know, trying to, to you know, but, you know, Turkey thought that we, Syria was going to be like Libya and that the, the regime was going to be toppled, you know, very quickly. And uh, Turkey just thought that in Libya we missed a chance. We let France take the lead and now we are going to, we are not going to let that happen. We are going to take the lead and bring our, 
our friends in the Muslim Brotherhood to power. So it seemed a, a win-win situation for Turkey. <laughs> and, you know, Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmed Davutoglu is a totally delusional character. He was in Ukraine a couple of days ago, and he said once again that we are the, you know, we are the, the game-setter in, in the Middle East. We are the ones who are going to order the whole region. The thing is that the Turkish government is finding it, finding it difficult to impose order in its own, within its own borders. Do you think that finishing off Assad would actually calm the Kurdish insurgency? I'm not sure. No, of course. What you're looking at then is a regional conflagration. Yes, of course. That's you will, it. You will have a, you, and, and also, also, you will not be able to get rid of it because the Iranians have said the Iranians in that case would not sit by idly; they would retaliate. So definitely, and, then, which means that this is not an option. This is not an option. The only option is that the only realistic option is that they they scale back their their, their aggressive policy. Turkey has to, you know, Turkey has to step back, step back from the brink of war. It has to seize, actually, it is actually a belligerent, Turkey is de facto belligerent in the Syrian conflict as it is arming the opposition and supporting it. So it has to stop doing that and uh, and return to, to a diplomatic solution, a political solution, it's a search for a search of a political solution with Syria. That is the only way, if Turkey wants to avoid uh, ending up in a wider conflagration. Oh, however, I suspect, I fear, that that is what's going to happen. What we are going to have here, this situation is getting out of hand. And what we are seeing is actually a repeat of what the Americans under Bush did in Iraq. Okay, they thought that they could come down, come to the Middle East and order it and get out. And they ended up in a, in a, a total disaster. So Turkey, much smaller power, is repeating, you know, the old U.S. neoconservative mistake. Actually, Erdogan and Davutoglu, those are the new Bush and Cheney. Halil, thank you so much. And just to remind you, our guest speaker was Halil Karaveli, a senior fellow with the Turkey Initiative at the Central Asia Caucasus Institute and Silk Road Studies Program Joint Center.